I got really interested first. And as I said, I was wrong because it, it's actually Silius is, is the king. You know, I got really interested in the distal hamstrings because um, I was when I started to look at the muscle architecture, I, I noticed like the semi-tendinosis and it was like right, a lot of people knee pain. And, and when I started to understand tendons and, you know, tendons are designed to transfer energy um, and started to look at that, I was like, geez, like look at these medial hamstrings, like there's something in them. Um, and then, you know, when that knee goes into valgus, you know, that's where we really need those medial hamstrings and, and medial gastro. So I think it was that point where I started to get really interested in the distal hamstrings. So I was using the midfoot stuff to really get them because it didn't make sense that if I was pushing through the heel, I'd be getting, you know, I'd, in my head, I was thinking more, um, you know, more proximal hamstrings. So getting the midfoot really got the distal and then everyone started feeling that. And the interesting thing about the glute stuff is, you're going to pick up, like you alluded to there, when you do a midfoot bridge, you're going to pick up a lot of tension because it, it's novel. But when you get used to that, you really feel your glute. But nothing's really changed. It's just your brain isn't picking up this, God, this is a lot of tension through my hammy. I get this all the time with athletes is, you know, the first few days it's like, Jesus, my hamstring's working here. And then they won't feel their hamstring because their hamstring's working isometrically. And then they'll feel, yeah, I can really feel my glute now. But they felt the glute was the same prior to this. It's just their brain was picking up that noise, as you said, uh, which is a good term. Um, so I think with the midfoot stuff, I was trying to get more medial hamstring. Um, that was kind of when I started to change it then. Because when I, you know, when you push through your, your, your heel on a sit to stand, you know, even if you sat here 90 to 90 and you push through your heel, you're not going to feel any medial hamstring. So that guitar string behind your knee, you push through your midfoot you know, you're, you're going to get that thing starting to, to engage a little bit more than when, when you're going to do a sit to stand. So I think that's where it all came from when I was, I was trying to get more distal hamstring. But I was actually, you know, looking back, I was getting a lot of soleus. Um, but I, I thought it was all the medial hamstring at the time. So, was, yeah, so what you're saying is as soon as you went from basically that single leg, uh, you know, on your back, glute bridge, and as soon as you're starting to um, go from the heel to the ball of the foot, and you're probably... Um, like straightening the leg a little bit more too, like like lengthening the leg a little bit more. Now it's going to go instead of um, hamstrings near the hip, it's going to hamstrings close to the insertion of the knee. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Sorry, yeah. That 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 may, that reminds me. It, it was all when I started to look at like the the physiological properties of muscles, length tension relationships, and started to really bring it back to the principles. That's when I started to to look at because uh, I was looking at the hamstrings. I was looking at the muscles in a completely different um, track of actually. Got the the I've got a Atlas color uh, Atlas color of anatomy. I can't remember the author, but I bought that book and I was just looking at like I was obsessed with the muscles and how the the angles they were attaching into the tendons and all this stuff. So like the perineals going in at that forty five degree angle, and I was starting to study all that stuff. And then I was starting like the medial hamstrings. I remember they really caught my eye. Um, and then it, it, I think it just stemmed from there, really. You know. Yeah. So with the, the coaching cues then, cause we, you've, you've talked about the midfoot a lot, um, but we haven't talked about like the, the cueing. Cause I felt like that was really effective when David was taking me through it. It just brought a totally different feel, but like, I think you use like squish and orange or can you tell me about how do you, how do you cue an athlete to push through the midfoot? And then what's that, what's do, what's that doing? What's happening there? Yeah. I mean, I actually, I robbed that from, uh, from Colin Griffin. I don't know if you know him. He's like a, a, a running, uh, SNC coach in Santry in Dublin and in, in Ireland. He, he was on a podcast me years ago and he was telling me, you know, he was uh, athletes when they're running, they were getting them to squash oranges. Um, so that was, that was kind of the, the cue I used that, that seemed to work really well. And I just stuck with it. Now I, um, so this is kind of where it gets interesting with, with kind of like top down and bottom up cues. Like that's a real big area of interest for me. So when we tell athletes to push through the midfoot or squash an orange, you know, or you could like, like look at Nick Winkleman's kind of cues of push the yeah. ground away or whatever you're using. Um, those top down cues are good, but what we want ideally is you want bottom up where we don't have to cue them. Yes. Um, so I think they're, they're really good cues at the start, but in the latter half of the rehab, I don't want to be cueing them to push to squash oranges. So that's kind of, um, you know, it's, it's an intermediate, intermediate step where it's like, yeah, like give them no absolute no choice but to build tension and then let's build some extra tension by squashing an orange with intent um you know so so that's the cue that that i find works well um and we've actually had a patient bring an orange into one of my physios uh recently um so we, we, we get this all the time where she actually brought her a physical orange in um because we, we, we just say that we'll say that cue so I, I have to give colin griffin credit for that years ago but um i i 
I probably disagree or I wouldn't tell an athlete. So like he told me he, he used it with squash and oranges running. I wouldn't tell an athlete to do that running though, if I'm being completely honest, because I want them by that stage of the rehab program, I want them just to, to be focused on movement. I, I don't want them to be thinking with using top down cues, if that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. I actually have a couple of thoughts there. Um, I, I feel like I should write it down because I tend to get lost, um, but I, I don't think I can juggle the, the balls in there of writing these down and asking people. <laughs> well, hopefully I'll keep it together. But the, I guess the, the first thing I was thinking about was, uh, you mentioned Nick Winkleman, and I was going to mention uh, something in that language of coaching book that he wrote, uh, which was excellent on, um, it's almost like the only place internal cues are really good is it's almost when, when you need the muscle, when you need to get that muscle dialed in. And he talked about um, like doing an arm curl. And there was a study where people did bicep curls with internal cues. And I think people just did them. And the people who had the internal cue of squeezed the bicep at the top actually, I think, ended up getting uh, a little bit more size on their bicep muscle or something like that. I don't know if their strength, I don't think they could curl any more weight, but that bicep got bigger. And ever since I read that, actually, I don't do arm, I mean, I'm, if people watch my like Instagram stuff, I'm pretty functional. Like I'm doing like breakdance stuff or, you know, jumping or sprinting or whatever. But I, I don't know. It's I, I, last time I did my arm curls, I'm like, okay, my forearms are huge from like rock climbing and, you know, all these things. And so, and I have a ton of tension in my neck. So it's like, well, I need to reduce that noise and I need to use really lightweight and I need to use an internal cue here. Cause I mean, it's just, I mean, any, any bodybuilder listening to this show, I don't think there's many, but they would probably laugh at me, you know, cause that's it's intuitive. Of course, that's what you need to do. Right. So it almost strikes me that with something like the foot, if you have dysfunctional level muscle, just the muscles aren't going in, you need to reduce noise. Like that's where those internal cues, the squish the orange is good. And then um, as you move from, one of the things uh, I, I uh, did a lot of studying and mentoring under uh, the biomechanics and running coach at Darian Barr back when I was in California. And one of the last things, the last year I was there, he said something I really liked. And it was the idea that was, I was always trying to make sense of pronation and supination in terms of like basic gait versus actually sprinting. And Adarian had given up on really, like he said, I have given up on pronation supination in context of sprinting because he's like, at that point, it's just circles and you're, you're not really going through the full range. You're just managing forces. And so I think of it like that a little bit. Like you, it, it's almost like the, the, the cues and actually working pronation supination gives you the basic hardware and the, the basic stuff to work with. But then when you're actually running, like, and David had said this, I think on my podcast, I'm not sure, like he would get people who are a train wreck in actual standing tests, but then they'd actually walk or run and they could like get it together a little bit, organize it. So I'm kind of like blabbering out, but I, I get it because I wouldn't use that cue either in running. Like you had mentioned, I wouldn't, like I get that basic idea, but yeah, once you're going that fast, it, it's more, maybe you're more circles and then you are like full ranges. So it makes sense to me. Yeah, no, no, it's a great point. Definitely. Um, yeah, no, definitely. And I think like by the time that foot hits the floor, that speed, I, I think, you know, the, the, the brain, the nervous system, it, it's got a strategy in place and it, it's not caring about turning a muscle on. It's caring about not falling over. Mm -hmm. You know, as you said, managing forces really. So, or, or it's trying to, you know, survive or, or beat, beat the guy next to him or whatever it is, you know, instinctively. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting that. 